Moscow from the Pentagon and the Justice Department, where after a week of scrambling and concern by U.S. officials to get to the bottom of what appears to be the worst U.S. intelligence leak, at least since uh, uh, Edward Snowden, the Attorney General Merrick Garland took to the podium to make this announcement. Today, the Justice Department arrested Jack Douglas Teixeira in connection with an investigation into alleged unauthorized removal, retention, and transmission of classified national defense information. Teixeira is an employee of the United States Air Force National Guard. FBI agents took Teixeira into custody earlier this afternoon without incident. This was the scene this afternoon captured by overhead cameras in North Dayton, Massachusetts, of Teixeira being arrested by authorities. The leaker's identity is raising numerous questions about the safety of U.S. intelligence. Ready for this? Teixeira is just 21 years old. He's a member of the Massachusetts Air National Guard. And somehow, this 21-year-old National Guardsman had access to some of the nation's most closely guarded secrets. The emer yeah, it's way too easy for people to get, you know, intelligence documents when they probably shouldn't be able to. You'd think, you know, military security would be a lot better. The origin story of how they leaked is just as shocking as these documents went from a secure facility to an online chat room. Again, the vehicle being a 21-year-old Air National Guardsman from Massachusetts. The Washington Post spoke to an online friend of the suspected leaker, a minor who was granted anonymity by the Post. That friend says the leaker was the creator of an online group where he had been sharing classified information and eventually photos of this top secret documents for months. NBC News has not independently verified the Post reporting, but the arrest was announced today and we heard from both the Pentagon and the president about the leak and the ongoing investigation. It is important to understand uh, that we do have stringent guidelines in place for safeguarding classified and sensitive information. This was a deliberate criminal act, a violation of those guidelines. There is a full-blown investigation going on, as you know, with the intelligence community and the Justice Department, and they're getting close. I'm not concerned about the leakages, and I'm concerned that it happened. But there's nothing contemporaneous that I'm aware of that is of good consequence. So, uh, we all have a bunch of questions, so let's try to get some answers. From the Pentagon is Courtney Cuby, and from the Department of Justice is Ken Delaney, and both of our uh, correspondents from those two beats. Courtney, let me start with you. Uh, I don't know how many people thought this was going to be a 21-year-old Air National Guardsman from Massachusetts here. That seems to be the first question that a lot of lay people have. The question I've gotten from, how does a 21-year-old have the clearance for documents like he got? I honestly thought it was somebody a lot higher up with uh, greater uh, security clearance than just some um, uh, journeyman. Yeah, I think it might surprise a lot of viewers that you have a 21-year-old Air, Air National Guardsman who has access to the nation's most sensitive, in some cases, some of the most sensitive secrets. So here's what we know so far. He worked in IT. Um, he had the uh, he had the the title of journeyman. Basically, what that means is that's like a skill level. So it's it, that was he had attained a certain amount of training and time on the job that he was known as a journeyman. But because of his his IT professional status and the fact that he was based in an intelligence unit at in Cape Cod at Otis Bear at Otis uh, Air Force Base. Because of all of that, he would have had access to these systems. Okay, so so that's how that's how we and, and he had a security clearance, obviously. Now, that opens sort of the next level of questions here, which is now with his security clearance, he would have had tremendous amount of training on what he can and cannot do. That would have included not being allowed to provide these 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 documents anywhere outside of the secure facility. So he would have known that as part of his security clearance training. Now. Why would he be able to access these things, which we heard in, in the intro there from Brigadier General Pat Ryder, who's the Pentagon press secretary. He made clear over and over today at that briefing that it's a need, the, you, the access to this sort of information would be on a need to know basis. Why would an IT professional need to know some of these operational secrets and, and, and documents, briefing slides? Why would he need to know the information in that? That's one of the big questions that we have out of this. He would have had access right. because of his job, but why would he need to know? It, 
and, and that's a question that I don't have an answer to. It seems that that, that opens up a vulnerability in the system. In I, the I was just going to say, Courtney, so basically what you're saying is because every unit needs somebody who's familiar with IT systems and understanding, hey, I lost my password. I can't get into the system. Can you help me out? Yeah. They just assume there'd be an honor system and then these these IT folks, well, hey, you don't need to know that, so help us get access to that file, but please, you don't look at it. I mean... I don't, I don't know. I didn't think of that. He was he was just using people's credentials that they gave him. Uh, I mean, pretty smart way of just easily accessing some documents that you shouldn't be, but it's definitely, you know, criminal. Look, at a perfect world, that is how life would operate, but that seems to be pretty lax uh, uh, guidelines and a, and a pretty big vulnerability that's pretty obvious. And it's, it's not just the honor system based off of what, how, again, he would have been trained, what he can and cannot do with the information that he may have access to, but also, I, I don't, there also seems to be a breakdown in accountability here because how was he able to print documents? It seems like many of these documents were printed based off of the photos that we've seen. How was he able to print them and, and then remove them from secure facilities without any kind of an accountability? How was no one aware of the fact? So if, if in fact, he was printing things from these facilities, how can is he it, take them out Courtney, of there? Is it possible, being the IT guy, he was able to erase uh, the fact that he printed out? You know, I know that, that these systems are supposed to log all this stuff. But again, if you're dealing with somebody who, has, who essentially has the kind of access that many heads of IT do, they can simply go in and, and you know, erase that log. You would th that that's totally possible, but again, you would think when you're talking about a secure classified system here that there would be uh, uh, fail safes, mm -hmm. there would be backups, there would be some way that this wouldn't be able to happen. And and I got to tell you, Chuck, I'm fascinated. <laughs> like I think a lot of people who are covering this are. I'm fascinated to know how this happened yeah. because it seems that it was not just one, but there are a number of areas where the system just broke down that allowed this to happen. Well, it's not lost on some people that you know. Sometimes, you know, rental car companies don't trust anybody under 25. Uh, and here we are with uh, some of our most important secrets here. Ken Delanian, what, uh, what have you been able to learn from your sources at Justice about what they've learned, what they think motive may be, cooperation, uh, where was he living? Give me everything you've learned so far about him. Well, to, to be frank, uh, Chuck, we've learned a lot more from the Washington Post and the New York Times who have who've been talking to members of this chat room, uh, which they called Thug Shaker, on this gaming platform called Discord, uh, where this uh, suspect was allegedly sharing this classified information. But I just want to underline, Courtney gave us new information there, that, that he had IT status. That answers a big question. And it's also exactly the situation with Edward Snowden, if you recall. Yeah. The reason Snowden had so much NSA access is because he was migrating data he had super user status that was the lesson they supposedly learned from Snowden is that you don't give one person the keys to the kingdom they were gonna set up a, a, a system like with the nuclear uh, with a nuclear launch where you had to have two people enter the keys to to access this data well obviously that didn't happen in this case it's remarkable it's a, an astonishing breach uh, so now this person has been arrested uh, we haven't seen any documents detailing the charges but it feels to me like an espionage act case that's the most serious charge involving the disclosure of right. national defense secrets. Uh, penalties could range from 10 years in prison up to 30, depending on what they establish the motive as. And what's Ooh, 30 years in prison. That'd be quite a while. Uh, motive was possibly just wanting to gain some clout with some friends. Interesting is that, you know, if you, according to the people that who were talking to the Times and the Post, who were in these chat rooms, his motive was not to be a whistleblower. It was not to disclose this information to adversaries or harm the United States. It was basically to impress his friends right. in the chat room. Right. And he had some extremist views about some, he thought the US government was engaged in conspiracies and, and he wanted to inform uh, these people about some of this stuff. So that, his motive actually will, will, will weigh on right. exactly what he's charged with. Ken, tell me, did he, where was he today? Was he at his home? Um, does he yeah. work from home? Does he have a full-time job? How often did he work in the National? Is this the, the two weeks a year, one week in a month uh, I don't think relationship fully... with the Air National Guard? What exactly is his employment status? 
I don't, uh, Courtney may know that. I don't think we fully answered that question, but I did see that his mother was quoted as saying that he was working daily shifts at the base uh, for the guard. And he was arrested at an address that we had tracked in public records that, where he was listed and also his mother was listed uh, mm -hmm. in connection to that address. And you saw that there was... Well, you, you would think um, once she get a... Uh get kind of get some publicity for leaking a bunch of information you'd probably you know want to go into hiding or something but maybe you didn't think he would get caught he fbi agents in tactical gear in an, what looked like an armored vehicle uh, and you may wonder why that is and I, I think the answer is because this person had made it clear that he was very interested in guns and may have had right. weapons and that's how the fbi rolls when there's any risk that a, a subject may be armed courtney what can you fill in here was he a See, was he considered a full-time member of the military? So that's what we've been trying to ask. So as a National Guardman, he could have been activated where he'd be working full-time in uniform. But also keep in mind that a lot of the, a lot of people will have a, a contractor status at a military base and then still have a National Guard or, or some sort of a civilian mm -hmm. role at a base and then still do their guard duty in their off time. And that's a, that's a question that we haven't gotten answered. So we, we, know don't, know whether, in, we don't know whether he's an active... Like, whether right. he, he's a civilian IT person on the base that also is an Air National Guard or if he's full-time military, right? Exactly. That's one you. question we've asked and we don't have the answer to. We know he's been in the, he's been in the Air National Guard for about three and a half years. Mm -hmm. There's nothing particularly different or notable about his, his time, according to his, the service record, which you have. It's, it's, I mean, frankly, there's, there's not much to it other than he has an Air Force Achievement Medal, um, which it, there's no indication of any kind of deployments or anything like that. He did earn uh, this you know, the special skill set of being the, a journeyman, um, which takes, again, time and training and, and, and certifications, essentially. Um, but beyond that, we don't know much more about his time. Courtney Cuby, Ken Delanian. Uh, it, I, I got to think this is going to make a lot of people think, OK, what are our vulnerabilities? Who has access? Uh, and uh, I guess IT departments are going to come under a lot of scrutiny now inside the military. Uh, Courtney and Ken.